thanks for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soraya. Well, we finally made it. 2020 is here, but we thought we would take you back to 2019 to look at some of our favorite stories. We'll get started over at the Terranea Resort, where Terranea turned 10 years old. The very, very first time I came was 13 years ago when the project was almost ready to break ground. And I was working at another property for Low Enterprises on the East Coast. And I came here and I was just overtaken by beauty. It was so beautiful and I could almost sense what we were going to be building. It was really an incredible feeling. I will never forget that. We had taken about 12 years to get all the entitlements from Coastal Commission and Rancho Palos Verdes. And we knew that we were making a commitment for the long term. We wanted to build a legacy property that would be here forever. And we needed the community to help us do that. We wanted to reassure them that what we were doing would be um, perfectly matched for this beautiful bedroom community. And it was important for me to give that sense of assurance to the community that what I say we're going to do, we're going to do. And we're going to honor and be respectful in this community. And hopefully we've done that. What are you most proud of over the last 10 years? Going from zero employees, or actually myself, one, to now over 1,200 people who receive paychecks every two weeks. I'm very, very proud that the community embraced us. And that was really important to me. And it, it is the joy that I have to be able to stand up with pride and say, this is Terranea and this is Rancho Palos Verdes. And I'm so happy to have put it on the map. So there's a lot of great memories. I don't know that I could say just one. From time to time, you're so busy, but when you do talk to, to people staying here, what kind of things do they tell you? They tell me, like, surprise and delight, like the falconer. They're like, oh my gosh, the falconer, it's so amazing. Or they'll tell me that they were walking the pathway and they ran across a neighbor. And a neighbor's telling them all this history of Rancho Palos Verdes. And that memory of the mixing of the residents with our guest is really important to the experience that the guest is having here. Do you have a favorite place here at the resort? Oh my gosh. Now that's a lo loaded <laughs> question. Is. I know. I really believe that Catalina Point, our wedding lawn, is so much joy happens there. And the moment that people are starting their lives, that's probably my favorite point. But there are many, many favorite points. We knew from the very beginning that for the for the success of, of, of Terranea, we needed the buy-in of the local community because of where we are, because we understood the value of the land and the wonderful legacy that we had in being given the privilege of, of working on this piece of property. So we knew that the community was important. And so from day one, we literally opened our doors and said, treat us as your own backyard, please come. We showed people around. We had coffee mornings for Terra Neighbors before we opened. Um, we had thousands and thousands of people come through in the first few days just wanting to see. And we said, yes, please do come see. This is yours too. So it's always been a focus for us to be part of the community, to be invested in the community, to participate in any community activity. And it, it's, it's been a reciprocal thing. We've got as much out of it as the community has. And I think that we have a really unique position. I think everybody has shared in our success, taken pride in our success, and we couldn't have done it without them. So it's been a really, really heartwarming process. Nelson's is on the old marine land property and you've always appreciated the history of, of the, how much that meant to local people. Yeah, that's been very much our focus, to honor the history of the land on which we sit. And it, it's an interesting thing. I did a marine land reunion in 2010, and it was really remarkable how many people who had worked at marine land still had such strong memories. So I'm getting a bit sort of woo-woo, if you like, but I think there's something about this piece of land. I think people who work here 
are beguiled, are bewitched. I think there's something special about where we sit. And I think that people really feel it. I've never met anybody that didn't enjoy their time at Marineland. And people love working here too. It, it, it's a special place, it really is. We, we do make an effort to participate in everything off property as well as invite the community on property. So yes, um, whether it's the street fair which we've sponsored every year for the last 10 years, whether it's whale of the day and, and we always attend, they use one of our golf carts to um, have disabled transportation there. We, um, we have many things that are exclusively for the community as well. Um, we do things like the tree lighting at Christmas, which is designed, yes, for our in-house guests, but mainly for the community. We've always, we started with music on the meadows and it's always been a concert venue here. We do Shakespeare by the Sea. We've done that for 10 years. Um, the PEF's main event, we have a relationship with the PEF, the Education Foundation, and this will be their 10th one here um, coming up in May. So many events are also celebrating 10 years along with us, and, and that's very exciting. The Marine Mammal Care Center we've worked with for 10 years and supported. Uh, the Land Conservancy, we do the PV Pastoral event every October. So these are strong relationships that we have nurtured and continue to hold strong throughout our time. You knew you were going to work here. Did you know you would be here 10 years later? I don't think I really thought that far ahead. I'm very happy that I am. Um, and I think we all take pride in, in what we've built. And there are 120 plus people still here who started all the way back in 2009. So if you think that we started with just over 400 people, 25% of those people are still here. It's, it's a testament to the culture that we've built and the amazing work environment that we have here. Why would you leave? And in 2019, the Palos Verdes Interpretive Center got a new exhibit that really lights up a room. Here's more. I'm Daniel Trotner. I'm the Deputy Director for the Recreation and Parks Department here in the wonderful city of Rancho Palos Verdes. This lens project came about all the way back in 2015. We were presented with an opportunity from the Coast Guard to bring the lens from the lighthouse to our museum and put it on display as being a long-term loan opportunity. So it's technically still the property of the Coast Guard. My name is uh, Chief Wright. I'm the officer in charge of AIDS Navigation Team, Los Angeles, Long Beach. Uh, our involvement with the Lighthouse Project is we get to assist Lampus Jim Woodward in the uh, disassembly and the transfer over to the Interpretive Center of the Lens. Also the uh, restoration and putting the and reassembly of the lens. That uh, lens has been up there for 93 years. Uh, it's incredibly brittle, uh, glass and uh, bronze. So getting it from the top of the lighthouse, which is about 80 foot tall, down to the bottom, uh, presented a couple of uh, really good challenges for us. Um, and ultimately we did it safely. A uh, really cool project. I'm glad we get to be a part of it. My name is Jim Woodward and I am a lampist. A lampist is someone who is experienced and proficient in the the moving, disassembly, assembly, restoration of classical Fresnel lenses from lighthouses. Due, due to advances in technology, uh, this type of optic is no longer uh, feasible for use with, by Coast Guard personnel. It's, it, they're a little antiquated and uh, the Coast Guard wants to have technology uh, all around the country the same, so we're moving to LEDs instead of the old electric lights. How long have you been doing this work? 54 years. What made this project, the Point Vicente, special and unique for you? Mm, special and unique, uh, it's kind of special because this is the last French lens that the U.S. ever bought. It is really amazing to see um, something so large get broken down into pieces and then reassembled. Um, what's really exciting about this exhibit is we're going to have the opportunity to uh, display video of how the lens was actually re removed from the lighthouse and then reassembled here on site. What is great about this display is that you can see the lens. If you're in a lighthouse, you, the you're so close to the lens you can't see it. You can see pieces of it. But when you can stand back five or six feet, you can take the whole machine in 
and just see what an incredible invention it is. This project was funded through the uh, museum grant program through the California Cultural and Historical Endowment. This is actually going to be the last lens that has been decommissioned and put on display here in, in California. So there's a little bit of history, history with that that uh, I think is exciting and specific here at Ranch Palos Verdes. And over at the Golden Cove Shopping Center, we said goodbye to a legendary restaurant, the Admiral Risti. Here's more. The restaurant's closing. Everybody wants to know why, so tell us the story of why it's closing. Well, our lease is up uh, at the end of August, and, and I'm at an age where I, I need to retire. So I made that decision. I think it's difficult for people, as we talked about, because the restaurant has been here for so long. Um, what kind of things have people said to you? Uh, a lot of people have approached me with different memories and, you know, two and three generations of families that have been coming here. And they celebrate their anniversaries every year, their birthdays every year. Uh, some of them's wedding receptions are here and they come every year. So it's been a lot of time to develop all these different traditions that people have and uh, they're not happy about me closing right now so uh, I'm trying to just have a I, I'm saying well let's just have a good time for the next six months and uh, and then we'll have a good finishing party so that's what we're trying to accomplish so tell us about reservations I'm sure you're already getting booked up uh, yeah the last few nights are already booked up and uh, we're been very busy for the last couple of weeks and I I keep thinking it's going to settle out but it it's been really busy every night. Kathy you've been involved with Admiral Risty for many years tell me from your perspective what this has been like over the last couple of weeks. Wow when the news was out it hit social media it was on fire we were in three newspapers front page um, the reaction from people Wayne is getting a lot of love from the community and they want to do anything they can to save it and oh my gosh these traditions and memories are so precious to them but you know what August 17th is coming and that will be it but from my perspective I just want everybody to come and have a great time make more happy memories eat your favorite entrees drink your favorite libations just have a great time like I think we've had right Oh yeah, let's just continue on with the party. We just want to do a good job for them and uh, we'll have a good time. This was our special occasion restaurant. All anniversaries, or most of them, if we were in town, we'd be here. Special occasions, birthdays, we were coming here. And uh, so it's going to be a loss. So we're going to have to travel a little bit to find the ambiance that we like, you know, being close to the ocean and uh, just the atmosphere of this place and the great food. Judy, what do you think um, you're going to miss most? I'm going to miss coming around the bend. I always think of that. I come around the bend when I'm driving this direction. I don't live in that direction, but at night if I come around here, seeing the ambiance of the lights, it's a landmark. Everybody's going to miss this place. So. I think people forget that people are allowed to retire, though, yes? Well, I think that's true, too, because I'm retiring as well. So I always told Wayne, when you're finished, I'm finished. Right. So for me, it's like coming full circle. First client will be the last, and I'm good with that. And I think Wayne's good with oh, retiring, yeah. too. You, When it's time, you know. Yeah. yeah. What are you most looking forward to in retirement? Just doing nothing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, maybe a little travel and... Um, I'm still playing softball, so I'll probably stay with that. And before the Admiral Risti closed, they held one very special anniversary party for the Marineland family. Now, the park's been closed since 1987, but the stories and memories remain. Here's more. We all heard that the Admiral Risti was going to close, that the, uh, the lease didn't work out on the renewal. And, you know, we had had such a shared history. You know, after we'd do big events at the park, we'd want to come here afterwards, and we ended up in the bar and just would chat and talk about the day, look out over the park. Uh, and so when the RISTI ended up saying they were going to close, it had been a long time since we had had a reunion, and we thought, you know, it was time. I was group sales manager, and uh, so I was at the park for just short of 10 years. I probably still would have been there to this day if the park hadn't closed. 
I have a little history. I started there in high school, two years before I graduated from high school, um, working on the slide. You know, just waxing the place going down. My brother had worked there two years earlier in the Sea Scouts, going out and doing the research with the dolphins and stuff, and I wanted to get into it. My family eventually moved to Minnesota, so I had to, I became a janitor for a short time, just because it paid more money. Um, also worked as an usher through a company called Crowd Management that was assigned to Marineland, so I could do concerts like the Rolling Stones, the Who. What I enjoyed so much was the people that came to the park. So when someone came from Ohio or anywhere else, never saw a gray whale. And you could point it out, show it, and it was a special place. Well, I started in Marineland in 1974, and I'm the guy that closed it on the last day. So I have about 23 years uh, dedicated to that place, and feel like I met, you know, many people that live in Palos Verdes and the surrounding areas because of all those years of hiring, you know, 300 kids in my area. So. Uh, I ran all the operations at the park, so uh, for the most part, most of the people who worked there uh, were in my purview. The Risty was an old favorite. Seemed like any time there was a controversial topic, we would maybe visit the liquid side of the restaurant, and uh, when we celebrated any major event, we would have a great dinner here. So yeah, many years at the Risty. I couldn't, uh, couldn't look forward to anything more than this event, just because I know I'll see people that I haven't seen in years. I just said hello to someone I haven't seen in 21 years, and uh, you know, I still think of them as a best friend, so it's a really nice environment to be in. And after many, many years, the Peninsula Seniors finally found a new home. Here's more. I would like to welcome all of you to the dedication of our new Senior Center. I think this was going to represent a permanent location. It's going to be a lovely spot where seniors can just drop in, have a cup of coffee with a friend. They can continue to do their classes, but if they want to just hang out, they can hang out. Your generous contribution made this happen. What do you think about all this? This is amazing. I mean, I can't, they came from a trailer. <laughs> it seemed like it was time. <laughs> they needed a home. Now, your name's on the building. Do, are we going to see you here regularly? Are you planning to stop by uh, and participate? I'll stop by occasionally, yes. I still live close, you know. Congratulations. You did so much to make this happen. What do you think about the center? Well, it's lovely. Well, I'm just glad it finally happened. And the furnishings are fabulous, which they did on a shoestring, I understand. And I really like the, the room next door with holds 100 people for lectures. I think that's just fabulous. It happened. We are sitting in your executive director offices. How do you feel? We're standing in them. There'll be no sitting today. It's a very exciting time. Now going forward, what's going to happen here? We are planning on expanding our program offerings. What do you participate in? Well, I love to travel. And so I love the trips that we go on. I'm more interested in the social activities and they be able to meet people and greet people. I think it's exciting. I mean, they've actually moved 16 times and they've been around since, I believe, 1979. They started with 400 members. What a cool place to be. I mean, they were just over near City Hall and bungalows and, and now here they are in this beautiful building. I think it's wonderful. When a community comes together, they can just do anything they make up their minds to do. No, it takes a village. This is your village. This is your building here. It's a great location for the seniors to be. Absolutely perfect location. It's in the center of the Palos Verdes Peninsula, for one, and also to be next to uh, the wonderful library and the new assisted living that will open early next year. I think it's wonderful. It's going to get more members, I'm sure. I'd just like to say come down, take a look, and join us. And one business that's been booming since it opened here on the Hill is the Lanada Market and Deli. And they have something for just about everyone. Let's take a look. Jocelyn, first of all, I've never seen a market like yours. It's amazing. And I, I need you to take me, yeah, take me back to your thought process, what, what you decided you wanted when you decided to take this, this space over. Kind of talk about the beginning. 
Well, I think a lot of it had to do with the community. Um, this is actually for the community, by the community, in all honesty. I feel like this market is bigger than any of us. It's been here 70 years. It was a three-generation family market, and then a fresh and easy, and then went vacant for a couple years, and then we came in. And so we really wanted to make it about the community. What does the community want? What's going to make it easier for all these parents and for these kids who are running around? And how can we make it um, convenient? and also healthy at the same time. Okay, so what I love is that you have things in there that are staples of food that everybody buys no matter where they shop, plus you have the healthy and the unique how do you shop for so many different things? <laughs> That's actually the really fun part, to be honest with you. Sometimes I get ideas from the neighborhood. The neighborhood is great about saying things that they want or they like or that they could um, find somewhere else and they want me to bring it in here. Uh, so that's been helpful. And the other part is really finding out what's trending. I go to a lot of different food shows as well. I think it's super important to bring in as much of the truth about products as you can and to share that information and then leave it up to the customer to decide what they're going to get. Okay, you're so close to the high school, to PV High School, and we see tons and tons of students. I know you wanted this to be user-friendly for them. Tell me why that was important. Well, it's important because I think this is a pivotal age for kids, and I think they need to have somewhere that they feel welcome and cared for and that their opinion matters, that their feelings matter. These kids go through a lot. Um, we all go through a lot every day, and so if you can have one place that you go to that you feel comfortable and happy and you feel welcome there, uh, then this should be that place. And so I hope the kids come up here and continue to come up here and continue telling me hey, this is what's going on, or can you post this picture, or, or I got the A on the test. All those things are important to me, and I love hearing them. I love hearing them. You know, I just asked you inside how you thought of s'mores, and you said the kids asked for it. <laughs> Tell me that. Yeah, the kids, they really do. They drive so much of what we do here, whether it's the sandwiches or the smoothies. Um, we brought in bobas for them as well, and the fresh-pressed juices. You can't believe how many of the kids get fresh-pressed juices. It's it's a joy when I see a little three-year-old drinking uh, green juice. I'm like, how is this possible? We're doing it, you know? In, in addition, I noticed that you have fresh bread. Tell me about that. Well, that's an exciting, that's a little passion project of mine uh, with a couple of the team members is to make fresh bread and to bring it in for the community and make sure that it's there. That smell is so unbelievable <laughs> when you walk in, right? And there is nothing like fresh bread. And really at the heart of it, it's what that farm to fork concept is. It's really taking it down to the basics, that bread and that um, family time that you can have, wh whoever you choose to create your family with. It's really taking it down to the bread and butter of it. And that's that's the part that I love. All right, so in addition to amazing bread and food, there's a little vino going on. Tell me how you select that. I can't take credit for that part. In all honesty, it's all my husband. He's wonderful with it, and I've learned so much about it. I have been able to bring in some cheeses that'll pair nicely with it, and we've become known for some of the charcuterie boards that we do here, which I'm so grateful for for um, but the wine I have to say is all him he's got a nice selection of things that the neighborhood wants and then some things for those special occasions or those things when hey it's Wednesday let's celebrate you know it's kind of that one-stop shop where you can you can get um, you know the special dinner that you want to make on Saturday night here or just the dinner that you're making uh, for your family because it's Tuesday and we got to we just got home from soccer or baseball or football or you know chess club or a group came in here after a robotics tournament the other day and they said what do you have and we put together something real quickly I said it's 15 minutes pop it in the oven you guys are gonna love it and they came back the next day and they were so grateful I love the fact that you've got two kids but you've got like 2,000 other kids <laughs> <laughs> well that's a joy anybody who knows me would know like I would take 2,000 kids any day over anything else um, I love children I do all ages to be honest with you because uh, I think there's a little part of child in all of us so so whether you're coming to tell me about your own kids, uh, that's the special part about it. It's it's the kids who really drive everything. And so um, when we make those connections, that's important. And we are back at the Lanata Market. And
and Delhi, of course, best new business last year by the Palace Rudy's Peninsula Chamber of Commerce and our good friend Jocelyn Lopez. We're going to talk to her in just a few minutes, but it's Super Bowl time. That means everybody's looking to have a party. They need their fixings from chips and dip to things are going to be grilling or cooking or baking, and they can really get everything right here at the market. And Delhi, as you can see, we've got the chips, the dips, we've got the Super Bowl balloons going, and there's just a few questions left to answer. Like, of course, who is going to win the big game? Is it going to be San Francisco 49ers or those Kansas City Chiefs? We'll find out, but let's go outside where the grill is on. And so Chef was telling us that the chicken is, is cooked on the grill and that you make the chicken salad with this every day. And so everybody can come in and have nice grilled fresh meat. And they can also buy this and they can take it to their own Super Bowl party as well. Um, so the chicken salad, the grilled uh, chicken for the sandwiches, and also you can buy it on the side as well, just like you said. And then for people that are going to want to barbecue steaks, hamburgers, you have all of that ready to go. We have all of that ready to go. Just come on into Lunata Market and pick it up. Now, I have to ask you, you've got chips, you've got dip, you have pretty much everything. So um, who are you rooting for? The the 49ers or the Kansas City Chiefs? Well, you know, I think we just want a good game. <laughs> the game is the important part. Since, and since our L.A. teams are not in it, we just want to see a good game, right? We just want to see a good game. <laughs> now, last year, of course, you were rated the new best new business here on the Hill by the Palace Fruities Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. How busy have you been since then? Oh, wow, that's so nice to say it that way. We have been busy, and I'm so happy to be able to say that the holidays were great. Um, we get new people coming in all of the time, and it's nice because we're able to introduce things to people, and we're always able to add things on and try new things, so it's been wonderful. And speaking of new things, your chef here, he is new. Tell us about the chef. Yeah, we're excited to have Chef Christian with us. He's from Argentina, so he brings a nice flair of that. He's also been trained in Spain, so he um, has a lot of interesting flavor profiles that we're excited to bring through. All right, Chef, tell me what you like to cook the most. What do you like to cook? Actually, the same things that we are actually grilling right now. Okay. Uh, being from Argentina, it is all about beef and chicken and grilling. Okay. So... Right here we are grilling some chicken. We also grill our beef kebabs, okay. our salmon, our tofu. Uh, we do our lasagnas in the house, and we sell them as well. Our shepherd's house, uh, our shepherd's pie. Sorry. Okay. Um, just to let you guys know, in the case, in our meat case, we have a beautiful ribeyes, beautiful New York steaks, okay. and filet mignons and different kind of sausages, homemade sausages, pork and chicken sausages. Thank you so much, Chef, for showing us all of your, your grilling. And uh, we're going to hang out a little longer. And Jocelyn, thank you for having us back. And we just want to remind everybody to come to the Lanata Market and Deli to get all your Super Bowl needs. They really have everything, including the chips and the dip. We noticed that you're set with, with really everything, sodas, um, a nice wine that some people like to have at their Super Bowl party. So really, this is a one-stop shop. Thanks for saying that. We're excited. So please come on down. We're happy to have you and we welcome everybody. And that will do it for today's show. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, have a fun Super Bowl party and next year we'll root for those LA teams again. But for now, good luck to the 49ers and of course those Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to end out right now with Chef Christian. He is grilling up a storm and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.